Radio. Okay, so this is the how I got in Watford, how I got into Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, the whole shebang kind of thing. Um, obviously, there's like hundreds of videos on these types of things already out there. But I mean, if you're finding this one, let's see if I can provide any different information, which I probably can't. But I'll give you a different like perspective. Uh, maybe I'll have some story just to tell that uh, you might find ever so interesting. So essentially. I got in to Oxford University uh, as a master's student for the maths and theoretical physics course and everything. However, obviously there will be people that care enough about, oh, how do you get in at an undergrad level? I'm pretty sure um, the points that I'm about to explain, at least the first two, are the exact reasons that a lot of the friends that I knew of, they got in at an undergrad level and everything. So let me quickly set the scene, right? So. I've already explained this in another video, but essentially, I had no interest in going to uni, like none whatsoever. Whatever changed was, I can't even remember at this point and everything, but I landed up going to Exeter University to do physics and everything. Did my first year, I was like, woof, wicked, loved it and everything. Then second year rolls up, we've written our January exams, and I remember it clear as day and everything. We were in our tutorial, it was like, Golly, what time do we use have? It was around like 11 o'clock or something like on a, on a Monday, Tuesday and everything. So forgive me for not remembering the exact specif specificities, I think. Oh, golly. Yeah, we butchered that one, but is what it is kind of thing. So in terms of um, what happened was we were in our class and everything and we got our grades. They just got emailed to us and I looked at my grades. I had just written my quantum mechanics one and electromagnetism one exams and everything. Got my grades and I was like, golly, I've like absolutely smashed this. I was so unbelievably chuffed with myself and I was like, you know, okay, like, you know, this was kind of like the turning point for me, I was like, you know, I really enjoy this physics thing, but I'm actually clearly, like, doing a ride at it, like, I, I can actually do this to a really good level and everything, they were, like, two of my best exams I'd ever written, far better than my A-levels and everything, and I was like, wicked, okay, so let's just go home and start looking at masters in theoretical physics and everything, first one that popped up for me was Oxford University Mathematical and Theoretical Physics uh, Masters, I was like, wicked, Start reading the course. I just loved it. I mean, in the end, I land up applying to Oxford, Cambridge and Imperial. And my first ideal one that I really wanted to go to was Oxford. And I'm just very chuffed that obviously I've landed up there and everything. Or here, yeah, actually, let's just say that. So, um, yeah. So essentially, the way that I got in and everything, I think the first two points, like I've already said, they will really apply to anyone, whether or not you want to do it at an undergrad, master's, PhD, golly, whatever level you want to do it to. So point number one is you just really need to, you know, not slack. You got to get the work done. And let me not sound too much like David Goggins and everything, but you've just got to be pretty disciplined, pretty dedicated and just absolutely hustle and try and do your best to get the best grades possible and everything. A lot of people here really think that, oh, every, or a lot of people from the outside really think that everyone here is just a genius. They can see in four dimensions of space and time and everything. Like, it's absolutely second nature to them. That is not the case, guys. Like, if I'm being honest, like, I am a average, above average individual when it comes to understanding stuff. And there are people that genuinely are below average at these unis. And there, there are very, very few geniuses that are amongst us and everything. Like, there are not many that are present. But people get in because they absolutely just work unbelievably hard at this uni. Like, I've, I thought I worked really hard before. I've come here and I've realized I really need to up my standard and everything. So for me, it's a case of, you know, looking, bad at, looking back at it, like, uh, it, you know, in a holistic way. Um, yeah, I just want to slip a big word in. It's been kind of the word of the week uh, in my flat and everything. So I've been trying to trying to use that one. So threw it into the video. I'm very chuffed with that right now and everything. But, you know, looking back at it, I was, I would wake up, this was back in my second year. I was like, right, I've just got to get the best grades possible. I need a really good application. These second year grades are what I need to apply and everything. When, and, you know, did all my modules, I would wake up, absolutely work for a couple hours and everything, pop off to the gym. Then I get back from the gym and I would just keep working until like 
11, 12 at night and everything. There were weeks where I just wouldn't go out, um, like out partying and this, that, the other and everything. And I mean, looking back at it, like perhaps that's taking it a bit too far. You need to find a little bit of balance and enjoy it and everything. But for me, that's what, like, I really just kind of, let's say, had the eye on the prize kind of thing. And, you know, looking back, I kind of wish I went out a little bit, but, you know, you can't be ever too so hard, ever, ever so hard on yourself with that and everything. So, yeah, it was just a case that, you know, there were modules that I knew I needed to really go and understand. I really just needed to do it to the best of my abilities to get the best grades possible so that I could have a pretty strong application in that regard and everything. So, you know, one hard work will always be talent when talent doesn't work hard so there's my little bit of david goggins uh, in the video and everything and then number two right like i already mentioned some people look at these people and think that they're just operating on the highest wavelength possible that they just could not fail regardless of what happens they don't need to do any work and they will succeed no matter what that's not the case people are here because uh they are just passionate and they just like going beyond what is even necessary and everything so you know like people here uh, from what i've started to see even more than before is that people here just absolutely love these things like there are weeks where we are struggling and we just think that this is so unbelievably brutal but we land up getting through it because we just absolutely enjoy the course we we enjoy knowing what we're gaining from having to do these really difficult modules and everything and i think you know the, this idea of when you have like a passion for doing something when things are tough you are a bit more motivated to get through it because like these terms are absolutely brutal and if you didn't enjoy it guys it's pretty easy to like just kind of give up at some point and everything for a lot of people out there but if you have the passion it makes it a lot more a lot let's not say more smooth makes it far less rough and everything so yeah when you have the passion and going beyond your course it allows that when you write like your personal statements and everything and all your yeah, it would be personal, personal statements, personal summaries, PhD um, applications, this, that, the other and everything. People can really tell when someone is a bit more passionate. Like the, these people are so unbelievably smart, like the in the application process and everything that they can sniff out someone that's just lying. It's like with job interviews, it's like, oh, I love investment banking because I have such a passion for Excel spreadsheets. It's like, oh no, like we can just tell that you're just here because you just want money and stuff like that. So, you know, like <laughs> fair enough if that's the game that you're going into, but you need to enjoy doing stuff because the person that enjoys it will always really just go a bit further. Let me let me just add in some extra extra little bit of like uh, some David Goggins. Like the person that enjoys work walking will always work walk further than the person that just enjoys the final destination kind of thing. So, you know, if you're doing something that you enjoy, you're just going to end up being a lot better. You're just going to end up you know, that passion is just going to kind of shine through a lot more in that whole process. And for the people that are doing like undergrad interviews and everything, if you're doing the interview and you're speaking to these lecturers, they know this stuff far better than you ever will. And they just really want to see that this person that they wants to come and study there, that they're going to land up teaching, just absolutely, absolutely loves learning about the stuff that they get to teach because you don't want to teach something that you enjoy so much to people that just don't enjoy it. Um, so yeah, that I think have, having a big passion and just also, like I said, going beyond the course there, there are times when I would see something in my lecture notes and I go, okay, that looks really interesting and just pop on Wikipedia, go brrrr kind of thing. And it would pop up with a whole page, granted half it, I would whoo, fly way above my head, but it would be a nice little talking point that I could then go and speak to my lecturers and just try and get a bit more insight on it. And, you know, it shows through once again, when you go and do these interviews or you write your statements, you can talk about stuff that goes beyond the course and everything. And that's what they really look for. They look for people that are interested to go beyond what is really necessary because that's actually what's needed to actually go and do really well in these types of degrees and everything um like obviously you can get your first just doing what you need but if you really want to push yourself and go a little bit further i think that's really basically a, a, almost an essential kind of aspect of it and then number three this really only applies to the masters phd students like your postgrad people you had to get by to get really good reference letters and everything so most unis they want either at least two some really want three and everything reference letters 
who the references are, you may ask. Um, well, for actually, funny enough, for Oxford and uh, Imperial, it was they just wanted academic references and everything. Cambridge, slightly different. Uh, I remember doing the whole process and everything. And you could select Her Majesty the Queen, you know, long rest her soul and everything. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, you could literally pick people all the way up to there. So ignoring that side of it, academic references, you just needed to get like the best references that you could from academics and everything. Because essentially the most important part of the whole process was you know, these people in the admission process, like in the departments of like physics, maths, who I apply to, they would then go and read the reference letters of people that have taught me. And obviously my lecturers are putting their neck on the line to say, this kid's really good. You really want to take him because of X, Y, Z and everything. They're not going to write a reference letter that they don't believe to be true. And that's because that just puts their reputation like on the line and everything. So, you know, the best way that I found to go about getting references and everything was actually just going and chatting to my lecturers. So I think I, I have an innate ability to just go and chat a lot of nonsense and everything. And you give me physics and we will go on for like a couple hours and everything. So what I would do is I would find something cool in the lecture notes or just something that when I went beyond and uh, I would go and chat to these experts and, and everything. And what we found out was Oh, wicked. OK, we just landed up talking for ages because think about it, guys, these lecturers, they literally love the subject. That is why they're there. Like if you ask the lecturer why he's a lecturer, it's not because oh, I'm in it for the money and everything. <laughs> Good joke, son. There's absolutely niche money in academia. So they're obviously there because they enjoy it. Right. So, you know, I would just go and chat to them, build a really good report. And I've, you know, got really close with some of my lecturers. They're like really, really good people. And I still stay in contact with a couple of them. And yeah, it's just really good stuff. And then, you know, obviously they get to know me better and they can write a better uh, reference letter for me. And then that obviously just goes off and then other academics read it and they go, OK, this guy really believes in this kid and, you know, we should probably take him kind of thing. So, yeah, that that's basically how how I got in, you know, you know, you just have to be, you know, switched on, work hard, be passionate, try and go a little bit beyond the course and everything, and just get some good reference letters. Obviously, that's if you're at a master's or PhD level and everything. And then in terms of uh, something else, I know a lot of people that I've met, uh, and I probably will continue to meet and everything, they think, oh, if I don't get into Oxford or Cambridge, my life is kind of over and I'm not going to enjoy uni. It's it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my goddamn life, right? I've met so many people that didn't get into their first choice uni and they absolutely have loved their entire uni experience and everything. So don't ever have that mindset. Like it, it is completely looking at a glass half empty rather than it being half full and everything. And when, when you start having that mindset, you're just not going to enjoy your time at the university that you do end up going to because let's say your standard was going to an Oxford or a Cambridge and you fall just short buddy you're going to land up at one of the most amazing unis in the in the world basically and to to think that they're not going to be able to offer you something is just one completely naive and just you know do what I did just come in at a master's or a PhD level son like try and reap all the benefits from it and yeah don't don't ever get too swallowed up by the idea of you have to go to uni because it has a big prestigious name. It's a silly thing, man. Like if I didn't land up here, I'd be doing some theoretical physics at some other uni that I would absolutely really love to be at. And I would just be reaping the benefits of that and everything. So that's just a little thing for people that think you have to go to a certain uni to have a great time. Just not the case at all and everything. You could become a great theoretical physicist or a great uh, English person, whatever they do and everything. <laughs> at so many like goddamn unis in the entire world so don't ever get too swallowed up by the idea of you have to get to a certain uni to have a good time but yeah that's just my kind of recap for how i got in and everything i don't know if it provides a different perspective probably not because i think we all have to go through the same application process but that's how i just kind of narrowed it down ever so slightly for how you know people really get in it's just you know being consistent just working hard and you'll be pretty nifty in the end of the day kind of thing so yeah not much more to say to that but yeah that's a little recap and everything so Hoorah!